What's going on YouTube? So it is just about 11 o'clock. As you can see, I am getting ready to prep some chicken so I can take it into the office tomorrow for going away, a retirement actually. <laughs> I take that back. Uh, much better than a going away, a retirement here in the office for a major. And uh, we're, gonna, we're doing basically a potluck for his going away. And I'm going to be bringing in uh, some some smoked chicken. So I'm going to be doing about four whole birds. I'm going to butterfly them uh, after brining them for the night. As you can see, I got my salt and my sugar ready to go. I'm going to get ready to add a little water to this pail. Throw the birds in there and let them go overnight. Probably get up in, in the morning around 3 o'clock a.m. or so. Uh, so get just about four hours of sleep, but hey, that's the price you pay for a good cue, right? So we'll see you guys in the uh, uh, in a little bit. All right, so I got four chickens here, four young yard birds. Um, I'm actually going to get ready to butterfly these, and I just wanted to walk you through how to do it real quick. So. This is going to be, you got the front of the chicken, you got the breast on both sides, one leg, one leg, thigh, thigh, wing tip, and you can see the wing, pull it in from the inside. This is actually your flat backs, and then in the back right here, you actually got the small drumettes for your chicken thighs. This is the back of the chicken, so you got the breast on the front with your wing tips facing towards you, and then you got the back of the chicken with the wing tips um, with the wingtips face, facing towards you. So I'm getting ready to butterfly these. On the back of the chicken at the tail is this little uh, flap, flappy piece of skin slash muscle. This is the very bottom of the tail and the back of the chicken. This is where you're gonna start your incisions. You can use a knife or a sharp pair of shears. So essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna take it. You're gonna take your chicken and with your shears, you're gonna cut. You can kind of see where the discoloration is, the darker, whiter part in the middle is the back the spine and then on the outside you actually have the the opaque this is where the uh, where you start to get into the thigh meat and the bottom or the back of the breast meat so we're going to cut along this dark white right here where i draw those lines into the chicken i'm a right-handed so i'm gonna start here on the right hand side and you'll hear it cutting through the back of the ribs on the chicken. And you're gonna go all the way through until you get to the neck. That's one side. The opposite side is gonna be a little bit harder because you don't have that base, that base support that you originally had. So again, just get a firm grip on either the thigh or on the tail. And then you're gonna cut on that side as well. Now you got the back, the spine of the chicken completely removed, and you can see the inside of the back of the breast as well as the thighs. There's always some fat that goes along on the inside of the thighs as well. I'm going to open the bird up a little bit, take my thumb and my fingers, scoop out all the crap, and then on the inside you can kind of see the outline of this little breastplate bone gonna take my thumb and scrape along the inside of that so I can expose the cartilage. Then I'm going to take my knife and I'm gonna press it into that cartilage until I feel it go all the way through. And then I'm gonna take my hands and I'm gonna spread that cartilage until I see it rip away from that breastplate bone. Then I'm gonna take my finger and I'm gonna pull up on that bone a little bit so I can raise it and get my finger underneath there. And then I'm gonna run my finger all the way back down towards the tail on both sides. Then I'm gonna grab that tail at the end and I'm gonna squeeze both my fingers underneath and go all the way through to expose the tail into that. And then from there, it's just a simple 
pull it up and out. From there, you have a butterfly chicken. Feel free to clean up any of the excess fat that you see hanging around on the bird. From there, you got a butterfly chicken. Ready for your pick. An important note when doing this step, make sure you don't overfill your water, your pail bucket, because as you can see, as you put the chickens in, the water rises. So I've definitely made that mistake when I first started cooking. I put too much water in the pail, and when I would go to put my chickens in, I would end up overflowing. It's really important, especially when you start talking about competition barbecue you don't want your water overflowing because you've measured your amount of salt your amount of sugar other spices that you might be putting in your brine and if your water overflows then it throws the balance of your brine off so it's really important to make sure that when you're filling your pail up that you measure the amount of water that you put in there it's also important and put my nerd hat on for a minute it's also important because if the amount of water you add affects the power of your brine, the strength of your brine. So if you have one gallon of water, one cup of salt, one cup of sugar, that's going to be a lot stronger than four gallons of water, one cup of salt, one cup of sugar. So it's just small little nitinoid things like that, if, especially that you, that you need to pay attention to, especially if you want to get into the competition side of barbecue. So with our chickens in the brine, we're going to throw the lid on this bad boy and with that we're gonna call it a night so admittedly I definitely slept past 3 30 <laughs> um, it is almost 6 o'clock <laughs> yeah it is almost 6 o'clock in the morning um, I ended up waking up about 5 30 good news is I did hop up for the most part rather quickly and I already got my coals going so I can get my pit burning and um, I pulled the chicken out of the refrigerator. We'll see what it looks like real quick. So it's a chicken brine. We got chicken in there. <laughs> looks exactly like it's supposed to like. It looks exactly like it's supposed to look like. As you can see, I got all four birds on the pit. I keep them on the, put them on the lower level for this cook. Still got the salt and pepper. Very simple, very basic rub. It's been about 45 minutes to an hour. Um, we're coming out here. You can see the pit is, go ahead, focus. There we go just above 300 so we're right exactly where we want to be the meat now you know how the saying goes if you're looking you ain't cooking but it wouldn't be a how-to video if I didn't show you guys what I was doing so check it out you can see that the chicken is already starting to get a nice color to it give it real close up and you see the wing tips generally because the tips of the wings and the tips of the legs are exposed they're usually going to get darker faster with the way I have my pit set up you'll notice that I actually put the breasts towards the fire end of the pit I have all my meat on the opposite end of my firebox but I put the larger and the thicker cuts of the chicken towards the fire because those are the those are going to take longer to cook. And if you don't do that, then generally what happens is the thighs and the legs will get done and they'll get a little bit more dry than you would otherwise want them to. So that's an important note. Again, this is definitely an art, but there is certainly some science that goes along with it. All right, so meat's been on, proteins have been on for just over two hours uh, actually we're right at about two hours um, step back outside you can see go ahead and focus 
I'm on. You can see we're hovering at just under 300 degrees. So again, you know, your pits temperature is going to fluctuate in between 25 ish, 25 to 50 degrees. Um, it's, it's just natural. It's a lot easier to work with coals than it is an open flame. In this particular pit, I generally almost always have an open flame simply because I have a lot of air that seeps into the firebox. It's a backyard cooker. Uh, it's actually the first cooker that I ever purchased, um, but she is extremely loyal. So uh, I've just gotten very used to checking on her about every 25-ish minutes or so. Um, overnight, it allows me to get 15, 20 minute naps in, which definitely pay off uh, the next morning. So we'll crack the lid real quick so you guys can see what the meat's looking like and uh, see how much longer we got. I'll probably be back out here if the color looks really good to probe them and check the temperature because I'm serving these to other folks. Um, it's just always safe to check the temperature. I know a lot of guys can do it based on time and uh, time and color and feel, but especially when you are serving um, and you got a business name that you want to and a reputation that you want to protect, I always recommend uh, probing your meat. So let's see what it looks like. Oh yeah. <laughs> So you can see, we got a nice golden brownish color. You can still see some light spots on the chicken right there. That's all right. The wing tips and the edges of the legs haven't darkened up too much. And you can also tell if I back up my two chickens on the left, which are closer to the firebox are darker than my two chickens on the right so that's generally going to happen because they're getting hit with the heat first and they're getting hit with the smoke first and on my the right side of my pit i generally have a hot spot up here and that's usually why i keep my chickens on the or i try to keep my meat on the lower level but as you can see we got a nice beautiful golden brown I'm I'm going to go back inside, grab my probe, and we're going to check the temperature on these things and see how much longer we got. We've been cooking for just about two, uh, uh, just, just about two hours um, at about 300-ish degrees. So let's go grab a probe, and we'll come back, and we'll check the temperature and see how much longer we got. All right, 168 on the front. We're at 171 on the back. All right, so we're back. I got my lovely wife out here manning the camera. Thank you, babe, buddy. Mm -hmm. Appreciate it. We're going to, I got my sauce ready and we're getting ready to open the pit. We're gonna sauce these chickens down and then we're gonna flip them, sauce the other side and then we're going to let them set for about 20 minutes and then we're going to come out and do it again so because i want the sauce to set without leaving any marks i am actually going to flip the chickens before i apply that first coat sauce is good to go we're gonna close this bad boy up and let it cook for another 20 to 25 minutes and then we should be able to pull these things off apply that second coat real thin layer and we'll pull them off and we'll be good to go all right so the chicken is officially done let's uh, open up the pit and take a look and see what you guys think so you can see we got a nice golden brown mahogany color. The sauce is set. It's got that nice sticky consistency to it, which means that we're gonna be having good, good, good barbecue. The moisture content turned out really well and we are good to go.